Okay. Get okay. We have a fifty dollar donation from Quick Persons IMD saying, "Told ya, I had more than enough chances at death." Thank you, Quickie. Now I just need to figure out which one is actually the audio for the game. That's loading music. Oh, I need to transition first. Yeah, that's Duh. what I was telling you. Elgato, there we go. Uh, test the audio. Just make noise. How's that sound now? We're kind of just improvising here. Okay. Alrighty, so if you want to introduce. We good? Alright. Hello, it is Kenta here again. I am here for my last run of this marathon. My second donation incentive, which is Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, Soma, any percent old run. Um, this is a run that I got into a while ago. It's actually, from what I understand, the most popular category of Aria of Sorrow, except for maybe Julius mode, because um, people aren't too much of a fan of like the uh, glitches that you have to do for the true any percent. And so, um, yeah, so you're going to be seeing a number of different... Um, which is here. Uh, Castlevania games are always really fun speedruns. They involve a lot of like zipping around, a lot of movement, a lot of uh, in-depth understanding. But um, in this one, the movement's not too technical. It's just that there's the tricks are pretty technical. But um, that's about all I have to say about it before we get going. Alex, I can explain the rest as I go. It's not Alrighty. like the other run where it's going to be over in five seconds. Yeah. Already, let me know when you're ready to start. Right. Three, two, one, go. Alright, so starting off, we have the, um, a short knife equipped and the, uh, attack soul of, um, the winged skeleton, which is the weapon we'll be using against the first boss. Um, damage boosting off the enemies there, if they present themselves in the right position, is a very, very tiny bit faster, but most of the time they don't, so it's better to just jump over them. We're gonna grab the sword here, but we're not gonna equip, worry about equipping it right now, because we don't have the menu open yet. We need the backdash soul because we need that for zipping. Mermaid R Merman RNG is annoying there. We have to save here. Um, we'll be taking a number of other safety saves as well, but we always have to save at least once because um, one of the most time-saving things that we'll be doing in this run is using the uh, quick save feature in the game in order to um, warp to the start of rooms, which even lets us um, set up and do backups for zips. So you can backdash through enemies using iframes. The strategy for this guy is going to be um, to stay in the right position and use the uh, winged skeleton's weapon as fast as possible. Um, if you use it in the right spot, then um, you'll get three hits every time. You'll get hit him twice as it passes through him, and then once as it sits in the ground for a moment. And you want to just keep doing that. We're going to be going over here with the flying armor soul, and you're going to see my first little uh, suspension warp, quick save warp. Alright, so we gotta go in the menu, put on the flying armor soul, put our short sword, and then sleep the game. That brings our little coffee icon there, and then we can come up here and continue, and that saves us having to walk back across that entire room. Not a huge time save, but there'll be more time saving ones in the future. So there's a couple of different ways to kill the first major boss, which is the um, giant armor. But um, what we're, we're going to be doing a pretty safe one. We're just going to be getting the bastard sword, which is um, a long enough sword to get past his massive shield. 
But first thing we're going to be doing before we get there is we're going to be doing a uh, zip off of a Gorgon enemy in order to make it down to that section of the map in the first place. So, um, Gorgon enemies are very well programmed. They are designed so that no matter where you're standing on them, when they turn around, that you end up in the same position when they go the other way, which seems pretty cool. It seems like, oh, hey, like, you're moving along with the enemy, but, um, that just means that I end up inside of a wall when I backdash, and, uh, the game doesn't like it when you're in a wall, so, uh, it boots me off to, like, a much, much, much different section of the map. There's gonna be one... Oh. There's gonna be one smaller trick here first, though, um... I have to do a backdash cancel jump with the flying armor in order to make it over there. And didn't get it the first try. I have to line myself up right here with the uh, pillar between Soma's legs like that. There we go, that's second. Alright, so the setup for this is, you gotta hit him, get up here, and equip the copper plate. Then as he turns around, stand on far left on his back, and then backdash as he turns around, which zips us up here. Just quick reference, um, we're here now. So, uh, that's a thing. And we're going to be going down to get the uh, Malfast uh, Soul, which is the double jump, which is the other thing we really need in order to be able to uh, efficiently get through the game. It also get, lets us get to uh, Hammer. Hammer is really important for this route because um, he lets you do the shop glitch, which is, um, you don't necessarily have to do it, but it's a, it really, really helps you with uh, safety of the run, because, um, so normally you can only hold nine potions. You'll see what happens when I get to hammer. It's fun. So we pick up a bastard sword so we can fight the, uh, enemy. Let me sleep here, because there's no good way back to that room. The big thing here is generally just going to be getting through enemies as quickly as possible. We're going to be killing very few of them. We're going to get, like, almost every level that we get from fighting bosses. And, um, we're going to be warping down to get the Claim Soleil, which is, um, a very, very, very broken holy weapon. And, uh, that solves most of our damage problems anyways outside. Like, not, not even having to worry about levels in the first place. want to make sure you avoid getting cursed, just because um, not having any MP is kind of annoying. You can't do uh, anything with the flying armor, you can't do anything with your uh, attack spirit, or attack souls. Gotta guide that ghost up, and then jump up through that instead of damage boosting the other way, because otherwise we'll get hit by his axe. It has a separate hitbox than him. Alright, here's the first major boss. This one's the first one that's actually a challenge. The other one is just a challenge to kill the fastest way possible, but with the great armor, we can die really quickly. So, it's important to keep kind of dancing around him like this. Every time that we jump and attack and land, it cancels the uh, attack animation of the weapon, which is why I can just keep attacking him so quickly. I have to be really close to him to keep damaging him when he's doing those attacks. He's giving me pretty good RNG, he only attacked twice. He could attack a lot more than that. Alright, so there's Hammer. There's our Double Jump Soul. If I want to heal, I can just do that. I, I picked up a couple of potions on the way. Thank you for the luck, Pharaoh. Yeah, the hitbox on that axe is absolutely massive. I've been practicing this all week, and I'm really glad to get a chance to show this off to you guys. It's a really fun run to watch, in my opinion. Flea men suck, so we avoid them as much as possible. You can jump right between these guys, because she backs up when you get close to her. Oh, I don't really want that, but okay. A little bit of a precise jump here to get up on top of him. Darn it. I gotta back after him instead, take some extra damage. Gotta try and kite that guy up so he doesn't run into you. Alright, so the next goal is gonna be to get to Hammer and do the shop glitch that I mentioned. So, um, 
we're actually going to be doing an intended warp for once instead of, you know, just making the game do whatever we want it to. We're going to be using the actual in-game warping feature to get back to the front of the castle. You gotta move through this room really quickly, because if you get caught up, then the cycle gets really bad with that guy on the, uh, the spinning, like, little wheel of death on the platform. Alright, so just as a so I can start explaining it when I get for when I get there. The way that the shop glitch works is um, I'm gonna sell everything in my inventory, then press L and then R, which would put my inventory into a glitch state. Then um, for some reason, this allows me to move the cursor places where it's not supposed to, which lets me start selling like RAM addresses. It's gonna it's also gonna cause a really weird like looking glitch when I um, come out of here. So I uh, so sell everything down to two things. I press left and then right. And now I have like a weird inventory and I go up and sell his mustache. Now I got like 15,000 gold and I overflowed my potions. So now I have 114 when I'm supposed to be able to hold nine. <laughs> Make sure to buy some mind ups because that way we can use um, more mana for the um, that zipping that we need to do. And then it also just, you know, puts me up here because <laughs> that makes sense. Just sell the system ram, that's all. Oh, and I just, like, I'm, I can't, I pretty much can't die now as long as I don't, like, intentionally act like an idiot. Or get into one very unfortunate situation on the final boss, but, uh, we'll get to that. So, now we're gonna be going down to the secret garden area. Um, now those of you who've played Arya Saga might be like, how the heck are you supposed to get there? Because I don't have the soul that lets me walk on water. And who boy am I glad you asked, because this game is broken. And uh, you're going to see why in just a second, because uh, I can just make the double jump taller sometimes. Like, it's not supposed to be able to, but uh, it's, it's just going to work. Where your jump can be tall. Okay, higher. Is it right here or right here? Right here. So, just, just, see, I'm not supposed to be able to get up with it, but I just do. Because I hug the wall in a certain way, which, like, for some reason, I don't know if it thinks that I'm jumping off the wall or what, but it just makes my jump higher. And thank you, it is indeed a very nice shirt. Oh, yeah. What's up, MST? Alright, so we're gonna be doing another Gorgon Zip here in this room. The big thing here is to kill these imps before, um, oh, I see this is why. Because they're gonna mess up me trying to get the zip to happen. Turn around. Alright, good. So, uh, speaking of, like, moving around how we're not supposed to, we're here now. So we have to be really careful in these next couple rooms. I need to focus, so I'm not going to talk for a sec. Alright. So, we need to get this fire sword, because it's much stronger than what we have. We need this to fight the boss. And then I need to focus again and get back through here, because if something goes wrong, I could just, like, die. Pretty much instantly. Okay. Everything hurts, everything hits like a truck down here because I'm like here like 20 levels too early. Case in point. Just took half my health from two hits. So what level are you currently? I am like five. And the enemies would be level... Like in like the 30s. This is a late game era. I am not supposed to be here. Ah. Oh. So I'm gonna do a safety save right here. Um, the boss shouldn't be a problem, but <coughs> if the pattern gets out of whack, I can just kind of explode because like two hits from him will pretty much kill me. So better safe than sorry in a marathon run. Yeah. And this next boss is gonna be um, a giant bat. It's really hard to fight, but uh, then we'll get the giant bat soul, which lets us zip. Oh shit. 
Oh, so much for the giant bat. So an interesting thing you're going to notice is that he actually has different elemental resistances depending on which of his eyes is open. So like, during the first part of the fight when he's using his hands, he resists fire a lot more. But now that he's using fire attacks, for some reason his fire resistance drops like halfway. Like he takes tw almost twice as much damage now per attack. Maybe because he's already resisting his own fire. And there we go, that's the lore. And this is supposed to be like a big plot twist moment where you find out that this like hobo looking dude who is the you've been like around the whole game is actually Julius Belmont, who is the ans who is like the last remaining member of the Belmont family, wields the vampire killer, etc. etc. And, uh, yeah, that's, we're, so basically, we're really far in the game. We're not supposed to be, but we are. We're going to go save again, um, because I want to be able to reload in case I die, because if I get soft locked in one of these upcoming sections with the zips, um, this is going to be my recovery point. Shouldn't happen. The zips aren't that hard, but there's always a chance. All right, so, I need to kill this dude, because boy, he's a bitch of a status effect. I'm just getting everyone's freaking thick on this run. All right. So first thing we need to do is an instant unmorph, which gets us trapped in the wall. You can see his arms are a little bit in the wall. So then we need to do a uh, back. We need to back dash, transform into a bat, and move out of the wall at the same time. Next, first try. And then hold left steps along the ground. I'm gonna kill these guys because they can just get in the way of me trying to zip. If I if I don't get the zip first try, he's absolutely gonna get in my way. Plus, it gives me a chance to get these hearts for um get a little more mana. There. All right. So I'm gonna do my mind ups first. Then I'm gonna sleep. Because this is gonna reset me to the entrance of the room. Right, this is where, this is like, I gotta focus really hard. I get it? I don't know. Yes! Okay, great. Alright, so that's the uh, strongest weapon in the game. This other zip is easier. Bat, and then. Uh, perfect! All right, didn't even need to do the backup strat. All right, so we gotta do this here. We gotta fall down here without going through there, then double jump up and move to the right. That's the final boss right there. We're gonna safety save because the final boss very well might kill us. Skip the cutscene, and then the final boss has two phases. The first phase um, takes away all my souls, which is why I use. The, I'm not really worried about my magic right now. The most important part of this phase I need to kill is this one. This one houses my transformation souls, and it turns into a thing that does like a shitload of damage to me if it hits me. Yeah. See, it was like 200. Thankfully, the hitbox is uh, kind of good, so... Yeah, we can hit. The, the other one's a lot less scary, because we can hit away some projectiles. And the claim Solace is broken as a massive hitbox. Right. Now, fun fact, it actually can't hurt me anymore right now. Because um, this one just steals my mana, so I can't use my souls against it. Alright, so 
so now, this is the hard part of the final boss, phase two. Chaos is hard. So, there's a lot of moving parts here. The, the important thing is, I have, the, the actual boss's health is the thing in the center, but the thing in the center also doesn't really matter right now, because um, it gains a resistance to damage that gets higher the more of those eyes and the walls that are open. So I have to, I want to be getting rid of all of the eyes on the walls before I actually attack it. Now, the thing that I was talking about just a minute ago that is scary, like, is these, um, those green orbs. They do delayed damage. So, like, if one of them gets sucked into me, they will take a second and then do damage, which means that if I happen to get hit by it at the wrong time, I could end up just getting Wombo Combo and explode. Bad RNG. Yeah, see, so I'm about to get hit by into that thing. And if I didn't do that first, I probably would have died. Someone's at one. Yeah. Like this. Have you ever run out of potions before? Uh, no. And even if I did, like, there's an even safer version of this strat that I could do. Yeah, so like, I could go up and sell like, Hammer's forehead as well, and then I'd get twice as many potions. And even more money. Time is gonna be when the orb cracks and breaks, so get ready. It is a 1925. Thank you. I don't actually know what my PB is. Let me go and look. It's because it's been so long since I ran it, I don't remember what my PB is. Oh, that's a PB! That's a PB by like 40 seconds. My, nice. P my, la my old PB was a 2009. <laughs> nice. PB! PB! Oh, by like 40 seconds. Woo! Freaking GG, bro. GG. He's awesome. awesome. Alright, that's gonna be it for me for the marathon. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed all the different runs I did. I'm glad, definitely glad that I practiced these runs up again. Had a good time doing it. That's a PB. Thank you guys for making that uh, happen with the donation incentive. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you, Matt. He did fucking most of it himself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Matt. <laughs> thank you, Matt. And the thank you to everybody you. who has decided to donate to God Jump and Mind Skip. Yay. Oh, wait, we hit it? We yeah. hit God Jump and Mind Skip. Yo, did we get more donations during the run? No, no. those were hit a while ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. yeah, so PB. Yeah, no, Ooh. I'm just pointing out how... I'm gonna have to go and put someone else's VOD in my fucking <laughs> collections of updated speed money. There you go. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, we'll be right back for about five to ten minutes uh, while PJ sets up, and we will be having DuckTales remastered. You will remember this expo forever.